the adventure begins. Today we head to Lau. She's getting ready. It is about five to six in the morning. We're being picked up at six apparently. We have a one hour drive to the border and then we have four hours to get across the border and get onto our boat which apparently is pushing time some days. So I'll see you on the other side. So stage two, we've had an hour and a half to the border. We've gone through the Thai border, which was literally 30 seconds, stamped the passport. We're now on a great big bus that takes us over the bridge to the Cambodia, no, to the Lao side. So we're on the Thai Lao Friendship Bridge 4. Well, see what happens when we get there. I think it might be quick. <laughs> I say that, it just, one. yeah, see what happens. So I've got to say that was nowhere near <laughs> as traumatic as expected, other than the fact we got fleeced by the Laotians for our visa price. They didn't like our US dollars, so we had to pay in baht, so which was of, a lot more. So instead of $80, which is about, what, 75 quid, we paid 91 in Thai yeah. money. And here's our transport to the ferry. We've been driven about 20 minutes north of the border crossing to get on our ferry, which is down there. They don't look huge. And now we've got to go 20 minutes back south past the bridge we were under. But before that, we've got an hour and a half here. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and a baguette. We're back to the French influence here in Laos. So a cheese baguette and a couple of cups of coffee, I think gonna be about two and a half or three quid. So quite happy with that. I think the prices here are dirt cheap other than being stung by a border crossing, of course. But such is life. This reminds me a little bit like Taman Nagara in the forest in Malaysia, with the boats down the bottom there. Huge wide river here, slow running. The Mekong changes its name midway through China. I can't remember the name of it, Laong, Laong something, starting up in the Himalayas. Thousands of miles long. Fairly slow running by the look of it. We're not in flood season now. These are our slow boats for the next two days. Six hours today and then eight tomorrow. I hope they run better than they look. They do look like a bit of rust buckets to me. Now, fully loaded, down the hill. The adventure begins. Well. Slow boat on the Mekong, on the Mekong River. Not something I ever thought I'd do. Crunch, crunch, crunch goes the boat. The boat is definitely creaking. It's, um, yeah, it's creaking. We're all comfy seats. Just show if I'm touch the floor. <laughs> Can't you touch the floor? No. Are your legs too little? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't see out. I need to turn them up a minute. Hard to think this water actually is uh, thousands of miles from the Himalayas where it first started. So where it started from, is it? Yeah. Okay. Cool, eh? It's got to be one of the most famous rivers in the world, isn't it? I think so. Do some research, baby. We're tipping. Yeah, all the fatties to one side, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm watching what's going on. There's lots of chatter. What, at the front? Yeah. Let's have a look. Hang on a minute. Follow one of the uh, crew round. <clears throat> oh god, it looks like it's going to row the whole way. We have to take it in turns to row. 
Well, that's far from an exciting start. We're out in the middle of the river. They've tied us to a chuffing great big rock. And they, uh, there's a load of banging going on in the engine down at the back. As we started out, there was a woman at the other end screaming and shouting at the front. So it was obviously a problem. Brought us to the middle. <laughs> Claire did also notice there aren't very many life jackets. <laughs> It's a good job it's not that wide at this end of the river. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well. We might, we might be swapping boats yet. <laughs> We're finally on the way. In the right direction as well. In the right direction downstream. So, six hours to go. It is. Right. Doesn't the engine make bang 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 noises? I do think we've already gone 50 yards again. It's going to be an interesting day. Um, we'll be arriving in the dark. dark. Just. Arriving in the dark, not knowing where we're going. Still, we've got plenty of food. Plenty little village, find it. We'll we'll walk around and find it in the dark. The big heavy rucksack. Still, we're on our way. We're on our way. For the next six hours, we watched the stunning scenery slide past as we headed to Pat Beng for our first night in Laos. There are very few bridges between Thailand and Laos. This is Friendship Bridge number four and the one we crossed earlier. Expected. Um, we're hoping to be ahead about five o'clock ready for sunset. Uh, the sun's already gone behind the mountains. We're late because there was a breakdown, but against Tom's wishes, there wasn't a second breakdown and it was a smooth journey. It'd be interesting to see where we're going now. Hotel somewhere, dinner somewhere, dinner somewhere, be allowed somewhere. Yeah. Back on tomorrow. Another eight hours of this tomorrow. Yeah, only six today, eight tomorrow. So now the big unload. There's a few boats here, they've come upstream as well. One of these will be ours for tomorrow. There's another boat coming from upstream, oh, from downstream, sorry, they're coming upstream. That's an eight hour trip to get here about this time. So yeah, that one there will be ours tomorrow. The one that we've come in, we'll go back up to where it came from. It's great when a plan works. So the boats are down the hill. We come up, there's a tuk-tuk here with a Mekong Valley guest house written on it. So uh, name on the list. So. When, when a plan works, <laughs> you jump on, so free tuk-tuk is a loaded tuk-tuk. Everybody here is going to it.
All I can say is wow. Bundle off the boat, still daylight. We have to all our bags up a sandbank, climb up a flight of stairs, sit in the back of a pickup truck, uh, bumped up the road with an awful lot of other people. I managed to get to reception first, he chucks the key at us, and this is the view out our door. We're happy. We're happy. We're happy. You basically come around the corner, oh, I've got to shut the door because mozzies are coming in. Uh, this is our room. Yet again, we're surprised at how clean it is. Claire's having a sniff. Probably not the greatest sniff on the planet. There's two completely different smells, so I wonder if it's the same pillowcase that somebody else slept on. <laughs> that and let's do the bed test. Actually, actually, it doesn't look too bad. For £10 a night, it's all right. Yeah. Now we are going to eat because we're starving. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, right. Cheers. Cheers everyone. Day one. <laughs> Lau baby. <laughs> so we've had our dinner in Pac Ben. It's a sleepy little town. I think it goes rammed busy in the morning when everybody leaves. And I think it's rammed busy in the evening when everyone's having dinner. It's now well about half eight I guess, nine o'clock. Yep. Something like that. Oh, and restaurants are shutting. Restaurant, yeah, restaurants are shutting. There is no tourist tat. I wanted to buy a, um, a fridge magnet <laughs> just to add to my collection. There's nothing here. It is, apart from the odd local going home and a few shops just shutting up, that's it. It's going and to be by, the... by shops, it means people's living room selling packets of crisps and cans of drink. Um, I think it's going to be the earliest night we've had in bed for about 10 weeks. I'm going 11 weeks. I'm going 12. <laughs> Any other raises are invalid because we were in England then. And good morning to you from Pat Beng. As you can see, it's quite cloudy this morning. I was up to see the sunrise, but unfortunately it was clouded, shrouded, shrouded in cloud. It's a very low cloud, misty cloud almost, isn't it? It is quite chilly as well this morning. It's fresh. Fresh. We've not had fresh for a while. It is lovely. We've got 45 minutes to whiz off, get breakfast, before our boat goes to the second part of the uh, eight hour journey this morning. Oh, looking forward to that. You've got to admit, there are definitely worse places to sit and have breakfast. I'm sad overlooking the Mekon on a misty morning. Yet again, Far East, everything seems to be in chaos. Some people are being sent to that big blue boat, blue boat there, and others on our tour are being sent on that one. They're both going different places as far as we can tell. This one here is going to Luan Prabang, which is where we're going. They might be going back upstream, but I thought they were going with us all the way to uh, downstream. So I've just been sent off shopping. So I've just picked up a load of snacks, like a banana and a chocolate thing. I don't know what they are. Um, it looks like it's being sorted because a couple of the girls that got on the other boat have now come up the stairs and are going down to our boat there. So hopefully we are finally all on the right boat. The engines have just started. Claire yet again is stuffing her face. She had breakfast 20 minutes ago, and now she's eating a banana pastry thing. It's lovely. Clouds are clearing. It's going to be a hot sunny day. Eight hours. But the boat today is a lot bigger boat, and a lot emptier. We've got a space. We've got four car chairs to ourselves. If you look all the way along, these are all car seats. They're either attached to a block of wood on the floor, as you can see, but it's not actually attached to the floor, it's just attached to a block. They all move. One of the ones at the front, I've noticed that it's rusted out so much that I think if we sat on it, it would collapse. 
Here's a good day. Sun is shining. Oh, Let's go. So for the next eight hours, on a boat that was somewhat more comfortable than yesterday, we sat and watched a beautiful countryside slide past. I think we finally got to where our destination is. Got a lot of steps to walk up with the bags. Apparently you then book a ticket up there to take you to your hotel. Let's see if Laulate works. Complete and utter Southeast Asian chaos. We've paid money for our ticket. For a taxi. For a taxi, for a tuk-tuk, whatever. It's the Ratana. They don't seem to be able to read or write or spell or understand. Ten minutes later our bags are thrown on the roof of somewhere and we've got in. Problem is my bag smells of beer. We've been carrying around a bottle, a can of Lao for about six weeks because we didn't drink it and it looks like it's burst or has been thrown into something. So my back's, backpack stinks. The whole of the back is soaky wet and I'm wet because I've put it on. So when we get to the hotel, we'll uh, see what happens. If we ever get there, we kind of really don't know what's going on. We're on a tuk-tuk now, as you can see. Basically, we ain't getting out until we reach our hotel. The funniest bit of it is that they don't understand, and obviously it's a different alphabet, so they can't read. Um, they want me to show it on a map, but I have no data yet. We haven't bought a SIM card yet, so my map isn't, Google Maps isn't working. So they're just out there shouting at each other, and they told us to get into one, and there was space for one person, not two people our size plus our big bags so um, they then changed their minds and they put us in this one which is just on the side and I think we're gonna be the last people off the boat to leave because they're out there shouting about other people now as well well, uh, well. <laughs> I was gonna sit here and wait we might be sleeping in this at least if it rains we're fine and we got, got, we, got we could drop them down and we could suck on my rucksack for a beer <laughs> Join us on the next episode so we start to explore Lao. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and drop us any comments below.